chapter 6 develop an honesty philosophy we live in a world of broken promises we live in a time when people treat their words lightly we tell a friend we will call her next week for lunch knowing full well we do not have the time to do so we promise a coworker we will bring bring in that new book we love so much knowing full well that we never let out our books and we promise ourselves ourselves this will be the year we will get back into shape simplify our lives and have more fun without any real intention of making the deep life changes necessary to achieve these goals saying things we don't really mean becomes a habit when we practice it long enough the real problem is that when you don't keep your word you lose credibility when you lose credibility you break the bonds of trust and breaking the bonds of trust ultimately leads to a string of broken relationships to develop an honest philosophy behind to monitor how many small untruths you tell over the course of a week go on what i call it trust truth first for the next 7 days and vow to be completely honest in all your dealings with others and with yourself every time you fail to do the right thing you feel the habit of doing the wrong thing every time you do not tell the truth you feel the habit of being untruthful when you promise someone you will do something do it be a person of your word rather than being a all talk and no action as mother teresa said there should be less talk a preaching point is not a meeting point what do you do then take a broom and clean someone house that's say enough chapter 7 honor your past every second you dwell on the past you steal from your future every minute you spend focusing on your problems you take away from finding your solution and thinking about all those things that you wish never happened to you is actually blocking all the things you want to happen from entering into your life given the timeless truth that holds that you become what you think about all day long it makes no sense to worry about past events or mistakes unless you want to experience them for a second time instant use the lesson you have learned from your past to rise to a whole new level of awareness and enlightenment life greatest setbacks reveal life's biggest opportunities as the ancient thinker irits noted there is sin was of fortune the best chance for a happy change if you have suffered more than your fair share of difficulties in life perhaps you are being prepared to serve some greater purpose that will require you to equipped with the wisdom you have acquired through your trials use this life lesson to fuel your future good growth remember happy people have often experienced as much adversity as those who are unhappy what sets them apart is that they have the good sense to manage their memories in a way that enriches their lives and understand that if you have failed more than others there is very good chance you are living more completely than others those who take more chances and dare to be more and do more than others will naturally experience more failures but personally i would rather have the bravery to try something and then fail than never to have tried it at all i would much prefer spending the rest of my days expanding my human frontiers and trying to make the seemingly impossible probable than live a life of comfort security and mediocrity that is the essence of true life success as herodotus noted so sagely it is better by noble boldness to run the risk of being subject to half of the evils we anticipate than to remain in coverly listlessness for fear of what may happen or as booker t washington said i have learned that success is to be measured not so much by the position that one has reached in life as by the obstacle he has overcome while trying to succeed chapter 8 start your day well the way you begin your day determines the way you will live your day I call the first 30 minutes after you wake up the platinum 
since they are truly the most valuable moments of your day and they have a profound influence on the quality of every minute that follows if you have the wisdom and the self discipline to ensure that during this key period you think only the purest of thoughts and take only the finest of actions you will notice that your days will consistently unfold in the most marvelous way recently i took my two young children to see the thrilling imax movie everest Aside from the breathtaking imagery and the powerful acts of heroism portrayed there was one point that stayed with me in order for the mountain climbers to scale the summit it was essential for them to have a good base camp it was impossible for them to get to the top without that camp at the bottom that offered them a sanctuary for rest renewal and replenishing once they reached the camp to they then returned to the base for a few weeks to recharge their batteries and reaching camp 3 they hastily retreated to base camp to prepare for the trek to camp 4 and on reaching camp 4 they again went back down the mountain to base camp before making their final push for the summit in the same way i think that every one of us in order to reach our personal summits and master the daily challenges of our own lives need to revisit our base camps during the platinum 30 we need to go to a place where we we can reconnect to our life's missions renew ourselves and refocus on the things that matter that matter most in my own life i have developed a very effective morning ritual that consistently gets my day off to a joyful and peace filled start after waking i head down to my personal sanctuary a little space i have created for myself where i can practice my renewal activities without being disturbed i then spend about 15 minutes in silent contemplation focusing on all the good things in my life and envisioning the day that i expect is about to unfold next i pick up a book from the wisdom literature one rich with those timeless truths of successful living that are so easy to forget in these fast paced times we live in examples include meditation by the roman philosopher marcus the autobiography of benjamin franklin and walden by henry david the lessons in these works center me on the things that truly count and help launch my day on the right footing and the wisdom I read during that precious early morning periods infusions and the enlightens every remaining minute of my day so start your day well you will never be the same chapter 9 learn to say no gracefully it is easy to say yes to every request on your time when the priorities of your life are unclear when you, your days are not guided by a rich and inspiring vision for your future a clear image of an end result that will help you act more intentionally it is not hard for the agents of those around you to de- dictate your actions as i wrote in leadership wisdom from the monk who sold his ferrari if you if your priorities don't get scheduled into your planner other people pri- priorities will get put into your planner the solution is to be clear about your life's highest objective and then to learn to say no with grace the chinese sage chuang zu told the story of man who forged swords for a maharaja even at the age of 90 his work was carried out with exceptional precision and ability no matter how rushed he was he never made even the slightest slip one day the maharaja asked the old man is this the natural talent or is there some special technique that you you used to create your remarkable result it is concentration on the essentials replied the sword crafter i took to forging swords when i was 21 years old i did not care about anything else if it was not a sword i did not look at it or pay any attention to it forging swords became my passion and my purpose i took all the energy that i did not give in other directions and put it in the directions of my art this is the secret to my mastery the most effective people concentrate on their areas of excellence that is on the things they do best and on those high impact activities that will advance their life work in being so consumed by the important things they find it 
easy to say no to the less than worthy distraction that clamor for their attention michael jordan the best basketball player in the game's history did not negotiate his contract design his uniform and prepare his travel schedules he focused his time and energies on what he did best playing basketball and delegated everything else to his handlers jaws great louis armstrong did not spend his time selling tickets to his shows and setting up chairs for the audience he concentrated on his point of brilliance playing the trumpet learning to say no to the non essentials will give will give you more time to devote to the things that have the power to truly improve the way you live and help you live the legacy you know in your heart you are destined to live chapter 10 Take a weekly sabbatical. In ancient days, the seventh days of the week was known as the Sabbath, reserved for some of life's most important. It commonly neglected pursuit, including spending time with one's family and hours in deep reflection and self-renewal. It provided a chance for hardworking people to renew their batteries and spend a day living life more fully. However, as the pace of life quickened and more activities began to compete for people's attention, this wonderful tradition was lost along with the tremendous personal benefits that flowed from it. Stress itself is not a bad thing. It can often help us perform at our best, expand beyond our limits and achieve things that would otherwise astonish us. Just as any elite athlete, the real problem lies in the fact that in this age of global anxiety, we do not get enough relief from stress. So to revitalize yourself and nourish the deepest part of you, plan for a weekly period of peace. A weekly sabbatical to get back to the simplest pleasure of life, pleasures that you may have given up as your days grew busier and your life more complex. Bringing this peace. Simple rituals into your weeks will help you reduce stress, connect with your more creative side and feel for happier in every role of your life. Your weekly sabbatical does not have to last a full day. All you need are a few hours alone, perhaps on a quiet Sunday morning when you can spend some time doing the things you love to do the most. Ideas include spending time in your favorite bookstore, watching the sunrise, taking a solitary walk along a beach and writing in your journal, organizing your life so that you get to do more of things you love to do so. One of the first steps to life improvement. Who cares if others don't understand what you are trying to accomplish by making the weekly sabbatical as an essential part of your life. Do it for yourself. You are worth it. In the words of Tarot, if a man does not keep pace with his companions perhaps it is become he, he has a different drummer let him step to the music which he hears however measured or far away